Christian Bale is one of the few actors in Hollywood who has smoothly transitioned from a child actor to become an adult star. But that's not to say he hasn't had his fair share of controversies. A man of extremes, great intensity and determination, his secret to success is that he doesn't just portray his characters on screen, he becomes them. Born in Wales to a businessman father and a mother who worked as a circus clown and dancer, Christian had a bohemian introduction to the performance world. At just eight, he scored his first on-screen role in a British commercial for Pac-Man cereal, and at 10, made his stage debut opposite Rowan Atkinson in the West End play, The Nerd. He quickly progressed to film in the made-for-TV movie Anastasia, The Mystery of Anna, and continued to impress, playing lead roles in the miniseries Heart of the Country and the fantasy adventure Mio in the Land of Faraway. I think he's just a phenomenal actor because it doesn't feel like he's trying hard, like he's acting. You feel the realness in what he's doing. In 1987, his Anastasia co-star, Amy Irving, recommended Christian to her husband, Steven Spielberg, for a role in Empire of the Sun. He landed the part, and his performance as James Graham earned him critical praise. The National Board of Review of Motion Pictures even creating a Best Performance by a Juvenile Actor Award specifically for him. At just 13, Christian was already being recognised as an outstanding actor. With the film's success came plenty of press attention, and Christian's schoolmates bullied him because of his new star status. The pressure was nearly all too much for him, and he considered giving up acting until Kenneth Branagh approached him personally to star in Henry V. In 1992, Christian appeared in his first adult role in the musical Newsies, singing, dancing, and using a convincing American accent. He kept dancing in Swing Kids, and the following year was hand-picked by Winona Ryder for the coveted role of Laurie in Gillian Armstrong's Little Women. It was here that he met his future wife, Sibby Blazik, who was working as Winona's personal assistant. In 1995, he lent his voice to Disney's box office smash, Pocahontas, and he followed this up with a steady stream of roles that included The Portrait of a Lady, Velvet Goldmine, and A Midsummer Night's Dream. Very busy and consistently working, Christian earned himself a reputation as a solid and versatile actor. I think Christian is an extremely intelligent actor, and he makes you better. Simple as that. Next came arguably his most acclaimed role as the chilling serial killer Patrick Bateman in American Psycho. But he actually almost missed out on the part. Initially the first choice to star, producers changed their minds, preferring Leonardo DiCaprio, who then abandoned the project for the beach, and Christian was reinstated. Christian was drawn to the script as it was very different from anything he'd done before. Using the original novel for research, he trained incredibly hard, spending months tanning and exercising to create that Olympian physique of his character. He even distanced himself from cast and crew to preserve his character's dark aloofness. American Psycho strengthened his reputation as a committed and capable actor, willing to completely immerse himself in a character physically and mentally. I admire immersion very much, but I'm not going to take that to stupid lengths. I'm not going to do it for the sake of it. It's only worth it if it's for telling a really great story. Next, Christian starred in the sequel to 1971's Shaft, but was criticised for playing another villainous character. From then on, he was determined to play an assortment of contrasting characters, which included roles in Captain Corelli's Mandolin, Laurel Canyon, and his first big-budget action film, Reign of Fire. Co-starring Matthew McConaughey, Reign of Fire required intense boxing training and together they filmed some very realistic fight scenes. We clocked each other a number of times during the fight, uh, but thankfully, you know, our, our motto with it was that really go for it and hopefully only have to do it once instead of being a little bit timid and the hits not working, it not really looking ferocious and gritty and dirty and having to do it again and again and again and getting exhausted. So we really went for it and that meant that, you know, a couple of times we did clock each other, but it's right there on screen and you see it, that's really getting hit. Um, so uh, uh, I didn't mind that, I don't think Matthew minded it either. 
Christian's obsessive dedication to perfection in his roles inspires awe and often concern for his well-being. In 2004, Christian took character transformation to new extremes in the psychological thriller The Machinist. Playing an emaciated insomniac, to achieve a skeletal appearance, he lost a third of his body weight by living on just a can of tuna and an apple a day. He's since said that although he loved the mental challenge, he'd never go to such extremes for a role again. I need some help here! It feels great. It feels like a kind of a victory because I did kind of just emaciate and destroy myself. And, you know, to the point where I kind of just watching me run is a joke because I just have no leg muscles or anything. From a bag of bones to a bulked up Batman, with the help of a personal trainer, he gave himself six months to muscle up for the iconic role he'd been in contention for since 2002. With Batman Begins, he became the seventh actor to play Batman and the only actor since Adam West to stand the same height as Batman, who is six feet two inches tall, according to the comic books. Christian is so good and so believable and takes the character in such a strong place. I mean, he really is magnetic as Batman. He's intense, he's got a great jaw and his eyes are piercing. You really go, okay, I can, I can run with this guy. I can trust him. You know, I don't want to make a Batman that is the same as any other Batman that I've seen before. That's not what I thought was the interesting way to play it. You know, I wanted to think about the unhealthy state of mind that he's found himself in, in terms of his, his need for vengeance, but at the same time, this, this battle within himself that, yeah, he's got incredible amounts of rage and incredible, um, uh, a very sharp need for vengeance, but at the same time, he has the influence of his father, who was a great philanthropist and a need to make his father proud. Initially, Christian considered turning down the role because Batman's skin-tight suit made him feel ridiculous and intensely claustrophobic. Extremely uncomfortable, he decided to channel the rage and irritation he felt while wearing the suit to portray Batman as a savage beast and menacing superhero. I think it takes somebody very special to put on Batman's costume and not be dominated by it, to control it from the inside, if you will, uh, because it is such an iconic costume. And Christian had a very controlled and specific approach to how he wanted to portray the aggression of this character, the animal-like quality. Batman Begins further cemented Bale's reputation for fully inhabiting and going to extremes for the characters he plays. Known for his uncanny ear for accents, he took this one step further and kept Bruce Wayne's American accent during press interviews. Then, for his role as an escaped prisoner of war in 2007's Rescue Dawn, he ate live maggots, among other strange requests. And it was fun as well, the piece with the, with the snake, where I had to capture the snake and grab him. And he bit me, the guy, the guy he got around, he got my shoulder at one point. Uh, but it's not something that happens to everybody, is it? Getting bitten by a snake that you purposely tried to wrestle. <laughs> Christian continued to challenge himself, moving away from action flicks to star in The Prestige alongside Wolverine's Hugh Jackman. Which begs the question, is there any sign of a Batman vs Wolverine movie in the future? We ain't going to be finding out anything about that until 15 years down track when uh, uh, nobody's hiring either of us and uh, we need a bit of money and we both got beer bellies and, uh, and then, we'll, then we'll start talking about uh, writing a script for uh, Batman vs Wolverine. I've always found his acting to be incredibly truthful. He's got a great range as an actor and a real strength and integrity and is fearless. And I think he takes a lot of risks in his work. One such risk was starring in the critically acclaimed, but definitely not mainstream, I'm Not There. I, I just read it in one go and I just went, that's right, I get it, I know. You know, I've, I've been here before with this, with the, with the Velvet Goldmine script with many people going, <laughs> could you meet? Ed Nortel of that, and, but yeah, I, I know how it's going to turn out and uh, having worked with Tom before I just went, yeah, no problem. After I'm Not There, he reprised his role as Batman in The Dark Knight and this time he was determined to bring more to the role. I was game on because it was Chris Nolan, you know, and I knew that he wouldn't be interested in making another movie if it was just going to be treading water. Uh, I knew that he would only do it if we were going to up the ante and, and surpass the uh, original uh, movie, which I think we did. And they surpassed the original movie in more ways than one, namely with the new gadgets and a new Batmobile. So did he really get to ride the Batpod? 
I got to be dragged behind another vehicle on the bat pod, you know, like 60 miles an hour, which was a hell of a lot of fun just in and of itself. But for Bale, the appeal of the role had little to do with the gadgets and special effects superpowers. The thing that I find interesting about Batman so much is the shadow side, you know, is this side which has gone through a great deal of pain, has a great deal of anger, um, and actually uh, desires violence, and desires revenge, and he does have to keep that in check all the time. But you shouldn't mess with him on set. After all, that's what triggered his famous rage-filled outburst while filming Terminator Salvation. While he shocked the world, he lost no respect from the director. I think he's the most credible, talented actor of his generation. He makes excellent choices, and he inspires the trust of today's global movie-going audience. And I don't know of another actor in his early 30s that brings a sort of weight and gravitas to a screen presence and has the talent that Christian Bale has. Tall, dark and handsome, it's his combination of mystery and intensity that has won Christian Bale a number of roles on critically acclaimed unconventional films. And with the phenomenal success of Batman, I'm sure we'll see plenty more from him in years to come. Stay tuned to Star Picks for all of the movies you know and the actors you love. Broadcasting glorious high definition with 5.1 surround sound where available. For more of the best in entertainment news, check out your movie network channels. It's all together better, on screen and at mnc.tv.